वेलकम एवरी वन टू आइडियाज मेड रियालिटी पार्ट थ्री ऑफ एक्यूमलेशन कन्वे इन दिस सेशन वील बी टॉकिंग अबाउट द थ्री डी डिजाइनिंग एंड मॉडलिंग पार्ट ऑफ एक्यूमलेशन कन्वे सो इट स्टार्ट इन दिस पार्ट वील बी ब्रीफली एक्सप्लेनिंग अबाउट द थ्री डी मॉडलिंग एंड कंस्ट्रक्शन ऑफ एक्यूमलेशन और फ्री फ्लो कन्वे सो बेसिकली इट हैज फ्यू पार्ट which is the section in which chain runs legs then there is drive assembly driven assembly and chain tensioner the last part is stopper one by one we'll be discussing construction of all these components and what are the things which are to be taken care of while designing them so this is the exploded view of accumulation conveyor of free flow conveyor we have legs which is a single module and can be placed up so at a certain pitch previously we calculated for this particular case we have to place it at 2 meter pitch then we have the section the entire section in section we also have the chain tensioner part stoppers again this is a modular concept and we have legs stoppers drive assembly driven assembly all these are modules and can be easily modified or placed in different configuration to match our requirements so it is very important to make your conveyor as modular so that you can use them in future for other cases as well about ideas made reality we provide design and development for the complete machine industrial automation and special purpose equipment in addition we provide mechanical and electrical design outsourcing and we work on various platforms like autocad solid edge solidworks roi e plan we also help startups in their prototype development and proof of concept development if you have any design requirement feel free to contact us and don't forget to subscribe and like this video starting with the drive assembly this is the section view of a drive assembly we have motor shaft we'll call it a drive shaft this is the end plate then retaining bolt these are the shaft end bearings which are keeping the entire set rotating then we have power lock those who don't know what power lock is power lock is like a wedge mechanism let's say this is the shaft and this is hub if you place a wedge in between it and you apply force from here and somehow you manage to restrict it here you apply force then it will squeeze together and will provide a grip which will prevent the relative motion between hub and shaft by the virtue of this squeezing we get the we restrict the relative movement between shaft and hub this is a very effective way of holding things in place and power transmission reason because we have a straight shaft you need not to cut any keyway keyway is not required so stress concentration can be controlled stresses due to squeezing as a thing and they are introduced in the shaft in this area but they are relatively very less when compared to a keyway or any other method of uh, holding things in place okay and power transmission another thing is this disc now the purpose of this disc is when we have rollers 
This is the transmission line and sprocket is placed 1 or 2 millimeter below the actual line where the sprocket uh, rollers will follow if there wasn't any sprocket. So if sprocket is missing this line would have been like this but we place ruler a bit lower so this will chain will move like this in real life condition. So in when pallet is moving from this location forward so we provide this disc so there is a seamless transfer when it will be moving to another conveyor. This is a spacer which maintains the distance between bearing and motor and additionally this is the spacer which maintains the distance between bearing and first sprocket. This is how all it uh, looks in the exploded view. You can see the motor is mounted in torque arm configuration. Now what is the torque arm configuration? The motor is freely suspended on shaft. When motor will rotate the shaft, we restrict it motor itself from moving at this location. So this is this entire part is the torque arm. It is like a pivot point for motor. It prevents motor from rotating about its own axis and the power is transmitted to the shaft. Now talking about driven assembly. Since the entire concept is modular, the only difference between drive and driven is that there is no motor on this side rest everything is same the, the disc the sprocket the power lock bearing end plates everything is same the only thing difference is that the shaft is smaller and there is no motor This is the exploded view of driven assembly. Coming to the chain tensioning assembly, this is the chain tensioning assembly. Let's move to the section view. In this section view, we can see this is the sprocket. Sprocket can move freely on this pin because there are bearing in between them. And we have a retainer, a circlip, which holds the sprocket in place. So in order to move the sprocket up or down, we unscrew this nut and then we loosen these bolts and we, uh, and we can move it in up or down direction. For moving it down, the force is required. So we tighten this screw and this entire assembly moves down. For moving it up, we only need to loosen this screw and by force push the assembly up. Usually such assemblies are also spring loaded so that they can automatically come back to their position. But in free flow conveyor and accumulation conveyor, chain tensioning is not very high and we can actually have this kind of arrangement where by force we can move the assembly up. So this is the exploded view. This is the plate which moves up and down. These are the bolts holding it together. Pin has a threading on this face which tightens in this threading. The, this stud goes into this, this plate where it tightens into this threading preventing the pin from rotating. So this is all about the tensioning assembly. Moving forward to conveyor section. This is the guide 
this is chain these are the rulers which are free to rotate which are providing the free flow or the accumulation function this is return chain guide and these are the sections holding together so in this exploded view we can see it's just a simple assembly these are the nuts which goes in here and then a server assembly goes here then we tighten this bolt then this is mounted on this way and these bolts go into this and chain tensioner the entire assembly is mounted on this face at the place by these bolts now coming to the leg assembly leg assembly is entirely modular and is made from aluminium sections these are standard aluminium sections which are available in the market these brackets are used for locking the plates at its location locking the leg sorry at its location these are anchored directly to the floor for adjusting the height of the the leg with respect to floor because floor tends to be uneven between it can be anywhere between plus minus 25 mm to some place you can find it up to plus minus 10 mm this is a good condition and sometime we can find this also these are the leveling bolts which are provided to move the entire assembly up and down and the conveyor section is directly put on these legs and are fastened to the fastened together with the help of these brackets this is the exploded view now you might be wondering that we haven't covered the calculation part of shaft or any other member we have used in this presentation why we haven't considered those things is because we'll be having separate sessions for all the component by component designing starting from even a single bolt how to select the bolt size to how to select the shaft diameter we'll be having classes for each of those thank you